Hi, in this video I'll be showing you this. It's the Toshiba MW3 AC26 6-in-1 combination microwave. What I want to do today is to show you around the microwave, some of the features and benefits that it offers. Also, I'll be giving you a couple of demonstrations as well. First of all, we just need to get it unboxed. So, I must admit it's a lot easier to put the box on the floor. So we've got the glass turntable. That's pretty standard in most microwaves. Get rid of the polythene packet. There we go. First impression of the microwave, I really like this. I like the design of it. I think it looks very modern. Also having the matte finish on top. I will zoom in in a bit just to show you it in a bit more detail. But what I want to do is just to show you some of the other accessories it comes with. I'm quite intrigued with this because generally I've not, not had a look inside. So we've got a book of instructions. It's quite a thick book. Anyone that's followed me on YouTube for a while, you know that I'm not a huge fan of instructions, but I think for some of this, because it looks like there's quite a lot to talk about, I might need to refer to the instructions a bit later. So what have we got? So we've got some grilling accessories, also a steamer. I'm actually going to try steaming something later, because uh, it's something I tend to do quite a lot. S steaming things like vegetables. Let's just put it down there. And also we've got a tray as well. But I think what I want to do, here we go, there's the tray. I think what I want to do is I want to get some of this packed away, then let's start talking about the microwave. I'll just quickly show you the dimensions of the microwave. So the width of it, you're looking at 49 centimeters or 19 and a quarter inches. As far as the height, you're looking at, what's that? So 20, well, I suppose 29 and a half centimeters or 11 and three quarter inches. And as far as the depth, so front to back, if we go into the very back of the microwave, if you want to go to say the front lip here, really looking at 42 centimeters or around 16 and a half inches. If you want to include the handle, so the complete depth of it, then really looking at 45 centimeters or 17 and three quarter inches. So it is recommended, especially with combination microwaves, to allow space around the microwave for air and heat circulation. Uh, so if you are thinking of purchasing the microwave, or I suppose any microwave, just make sure it'll fit in, because there's nothing more frustrating than having it arrive than realizing it doesn't fit. I've just plugged the microwave in. As you can see, you've got a really nice clear white LED display. It looks like it's very, very easy to read, which I think is always a bonus when you're looking at purchasing a microwave. Uh, what I want to do is to set the clock, and to do that, what you need to do is press that button twice, and turn the dial, so I'm recording this where you're going to find out the time. So at this very moment, it's 8.37 in the morning. So press that button, press the timer button again, and just rotate the dial. So 8.37, there we go. And that's it. So time is set, couldn't be easier. I'll run through some of the different options it's got now. When it comes to using the microwave, couldn't be easier. Again, you just press the microwave button and you've got quite a few different options depending on the power level you want. So this is 100% power and each time you press it, it goes down so it's 50% and it goes all the way down to 10%. And I suppose that really depends on I suppose, what you want as a microwave. Once you've selected the power level that's required, just press the start button to, to confirm that. And then all you need to do is just select the time. And again, just rotating the dial is so much easier than having to press buttons, I find. Uh, especially if, you've, if you if suffer, you suffer with your hands. Uh, my nan, who's, uh, well, she's in her early 90s now, uh, she does suffer with arthritis, and I know with this kind of microwave, would make it so much easier for her. So as you can see, to start off with, it goes up in five second increments, and then as you get to over a minute, it goes up in 10 second increments. And you can go, I'll just go the other way, so you can go all the way up to 95 minutes. So you can, uh, microwave something for 95 minutes if you wanted to. I don't know anything that you would want to microwave for 95 minutes. Um, what could you microwave for 95 minutes? Let me know in the comments below. So before I start recording the video, I have got a cup of coffee on the go, and I must admit, it's gone a little bit cold. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to reheat this up. So all we need to do is to open the door, just pop that in, shut the door, and I've already selected the power level. And I suppose for something like this, some, uh, probably about 50 seconds should be okay. So I've selected that and then press start. There we go. 
Let's have a little look. I can already feel that. Look at that, you can see the steam coming off it loads better. There's nothing worse than a cold cup of coffee. Now there is a lot of functionality that you can do on here. So if you press the function button, then you've got things like the grill. So if you just wanted to say, stick something under the grill, uh, if you've got say a piece of toast that you wanted to grill, then you've got that option. If you press this one, this is the combination cooking. So this is where it will combine different functionalities of cooking. So if you wanted to say do a jacket potato, you could uh, put it within the microwave and then combining it with other elements of the microwave, you can get the crispy skin as well, which is always a bonus because there's nothing worse than having a jacket potato where you're cooking it and it's soggy or it's soft on the inside, but then it's all soggy on the outside. And then as you toggle through the different functions, then you'll realize, because you've got the different options at the top here, so it, it shows you whether it involves the grill or not, and whether it's fan assisted cooking, which is always an excellent feature. Uh, I suppose the main advantage of fan assisted cooking is this much more even heat distribution within the microwave. And then as you come up to the figures here, so this is just showing the temperature of the oven that's going to be heated up. So you just carry on pressing it, so it will toggle all the way, so you can go all the way up to 240 degrees centigrade. Now, not many ovens even go to that temperature, so it's really good having that as an option. Uh, so if you've selected that, so if, you, if, if I wanted to cook something at 240 degrees, then just press the start to confirm that. And then all you need to do is to set the timer, because you can time it to, this is, and this is, an, I suppose, another advantage compared to a standard oven, because not many ovens are fully programmable now, where you can get them to turn off at a certain time. So for example, if I wanted something at 240 degrees, for, for example, for say 10 minutes, then uh, all I would do is, I've already selected the temperature, 10 minutes, and then all I'd need to do is just press start. This is another function that's really good on the microwave called Chef Defrost. And the idea of this, it prevents overcooking and undercooking by adjusting power for precise control. And what you can do is you've got several different options on here, I suppose, depending on what you want to defrost. Now, when it comes to defrosting, I suppose, any food, it's always really important that it is fully defrosted uh, before you start the cooking process, because uh, it can be very dangerous and you can get things like food poisoning. So DEF1, with that, that's where you just manually select the time. So if I wanted to defrost something for, say, three and a half minutes, then I would just rotate the dial and once I've got that selected, just press the start button and that will go through the defrosting process. The other option, so you've got, if I just cancel that, then press Chef Defrost again, then you've actually got three other options. So you've got DEF2, DEF3, and then DEF4. And whereas with DEF1, we were selecting the time manually, with DEF2, 3, and 4, what we do is we actually put the weight into the food and it will adjust the time accordingly, which is actually really, really good. So depending on what you wanted to defrost, so DEF2, let's just go back. So DEF2 would be used for meat, DEF3 will be for chicken, and then DEF4 will be for fish. So if I had, say, some chicken breasts, so let's go back to DEF3, that's it. So chicken, and then all you would do is you'll just select the weight of it. So it's here in grams. So if it was, say, 800 grams, and then after you've selected that, then all you need to do is just press the start button and it will go through the defrosting process. Now the next option to mention is called auto menu. And with this, all you need to do is rotate the dial once. And then once I've selected that, press the start button. And then you've got several different options. You've actually got 10 different options depending on what you wanted to heat up. Now the first one is going to be the auto reheat. And essentially what all these programs are doing is what you, once you've selected the program as to which food we want to heat up, then we're going to select the weight. And what it will do is it will just adjust the, the heating time depending on what's in there, which is fantastic. I suppose to some people, if you're not really sure how long to cook things for, then this is a really, really good option for you. So the first one is auto reheat. The next one is potato. Number three is meat. Number four, vegetables. Number five is fish. Number six is pasta. Number seven is soup. Number eight is cakes. Number nine is pizza. And number 10 is chicken. So once you've selected that, so all you would need to do is to press the start button. And then all you do is you just select the weight of the food that's in there. And then once you've selected that, press the start button. 
Now, something that this microwave has got that not many other microwaves have got on the market is an air frying option. Now, air frying, especially here in the UK, has been massive for really the last, I suppose, four or five years. It is a much healthier way of cooking. Uh, and also the results will be a lot better than if you're just using a standard microwave. Uh, if you're going to compare it to using a normal oven, then it can be a lot more efficient as well. Now the next different options, and this is part of the demonstration that I want to do in a couple of minutes, is the next one is called air fry menu. And all you need to do is just change that to H1. And it just shows different symbols at the top here. Now air frying in microwaves is pretty unique. Uh, but personally, I think the way air frying works is much better, much healthier way of cooking. Uh, I've been using a standalone air fryer for a while now, but you can tend to find that you can have quite a few different gadgets. Um, and that's why I love this concept of having the six in one. Uh, so I suppose for me going forward now, I won't really need to use the air fryer by using this. And again with this, rather than having to guess the time of how, how long to cook things for, depending on what you wanted to cook, then you've got different options in here. So now I've selected H1, then all I need to do is press the start option, and then you've got several different options underneath. So it, it toggles between French fries, frozen potato croquettes, put my teeth back in, frozen squid, frozen onion rings, chicken nuggets, well, frozen chicken nuggets is H5, and then escallops, shrimps, vegetables, and spring rolls. I must admit, some of the options on here are a little bit random for air frying, uh, I don't tend to air fry many shrimps myself, but I'm going to be air frying some something a little bit more interesting. I suppose something that's a little bit more down to earth for me. For example, if you wanted to air fry some frozen french fries, which is H1, the first option on here, then all you would need to do is, once you've selected that, shut the door and then just press start. Then the next option on here, if we turn the dial, is C1, and that's crispy grill menu. And again, you've got different options on here, depending on what you wanted to put under the grill. So you've got C1, which will be cordon bleu, or fresh mini pizza, lasagna, bread, and then pie and tart. So you've got different options on here, depending on what you wanted to use within the crispy grill menu. Then the final option on here, if we turn this dial, is steam. And this is, again, this is gonna be the second part of the demonstration that I want to use within the microwave. And with this, this is where we're going to be using the container. So water boils under the steam tray while the lid contains the moisture. This is perfect for things like vegetables or seafood. And the main advantage is for healthy and delicious food, it keeps all the nutrients locked in. And this is really what I want to do. I want to, to give you a demonstration of this. So what I've done is I've got 125 grams of broccoli just popped into the steamer. Uh, but just before I start the demonstration, uh, I just wanted to go through the different options. So as I mentioned with all the other ones, uh, things like the air fry menu, depending on what you wanted to heat up or cook, there are quite a few different options. And within the menus, so I'm just referring to the instructions, uh, you've got carrot in slices, baby carrots, cauliflower, broccoli, spinach, potatoes in slices, green beans, salmon, shrimps, chicken breast, and green asparagus. So quite a few different options of ways to cook or to heat up within the microwave using the steam option. Uh, now this is something I'm, I'm quite looking forward to actually, because I must admit the, I suppose the way of cooking vegetables before, uh, a lot of people just tend to put them on a hob in some boiling water and it loses the flavor and they can go a bit mushy. Uh, that's not really the way I've tended to cook vegetables, but the way I tend to use them is to put some boiling water in a pan and have a steamer above it, or even to have a separate steamer. And you do tend to find the, the quality and the, the way the vegetables are is so much nicer. Anyway, I've put some water in here at the bottom. It doesn't say how much to put in, it just says put some water in there. So I've put uh, probably about half a centimetre of water in there. And I'm just going to pop the lid on. Now, if I just pop it in here, of course, I don't need to select the time because the microwave itself is going to show me how to do it. So again, just referring to the instructions. So if we turn the dial right, so we come to the steam option and number four is the broccoli. So if we press the start button to confirm and then number four, and that one is, so 125 grams. That's preset in there. As it happens, it is exactly 125 grams. 
and now all we need to do but what you can do is you can change the weight if you want to so if I've got 250 grams or if I've got double the amount then just select that but for this purpose I've got 125 grams now we're ready to go as you can see it's going to take around three and a half minutes and in that time I'm going to go make another coffee just while my kettle is boiling from a cup of coffee and the broccoli is cooking away in there and I must admit the smell from that is really nice I'll just explain about this origin inverter and the whole concept of origin inverter within the Toshiba microwave is it shortens the heating time and it saves energy this clever technology replaces noisy transformers and capacitors and it also reduces the noise levels to around 57 decibels making it really quiet and I must admit <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that um, if you can't then that's a really good thing um, I've had different microwaves over the years from different brands and this is by far the quietest one that I've had and I'm really really pleased with it so now that's done let's just take this out and have a quick look there's steam coming out of that but I must admit that looks amazing uh, I'm just going to cut into that now that for me is absolutely perfect it's not too not too hard uh, and also it's not soft and I suppose squishy like some of the other uh, some of the other vegetables I've cooked in the past uh, I'm just going to try this mmm now that is fantastic it's just got a little crunch to it but the timing at three and a half minutes for me is absolutely perfect as healthy and nutritious as broccoli is one of my favorite things doesn't matter what part of the day whether it's dusk through to dawn is to eat a bacon sandwich it's something i've always loved and i'll continue to eat them so what i've done here is i've just popped a couple of rashes of bacon because as you can see from the time it's 10 14 so although i had a little breakfast earlier i'm just going to have a bacon sandwich because i'm quite hungry now um, so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to select the air fry menu now although bacon isn't actually on the air fry option i'm going to try it anyway uh, it's something that even though i a lot of people will tend to follow the instructions i'm going to make it up a little bit but i really want to see how well this will air fry the bacon so what it does recommend is to use the grill rack and pop the food onto the pan so let's pop it in here like that there we go let's shut the door and then to select h1 and what i'm going to do is i'm going to select well if i select a scallop so that will be uh, h6 so press start and then h6 so this will be a little bit of trial and error but i really want to just test it to see how well it will cook bacon so now we've done that then press start clearly it says 25 minutes whether it takes that long i'm not too sure but i'm going to leave it to do its thing and then come back after probably about five or six minutes to see how well it's doing so i've just paused it where it says it's got just under 21 minutes to go so i know it's not been in for long but i just wanted to see how well it's doing and you can see it's already started to cook which is always a little bonus and the amount of steam coming off here already uh, but i've just turned the bacon rashers over and pop them back in shut the door and let's carry on so i'm just going to pause it with around 10 minutes to go because i want to see how well it's cooking and i must say that is looking absolutely fantastic so now the bacon looks perfect i do need to try it as well this is my favorite way of having a bacon sandwich no butter a bit of brown sauce is that the way you like it how would you eat a bacon sandwich so i'm just going to try it see what it's like Mm. I must admit that is absolutely stunning the bacon itself it's not too crispy because I don't like it too crispy or too well done that's perfect for how I like it also it's not too dry as well which is always another thing um, I'm just going to finish this off but just before I finish my bacon sandwich if you're as impressed as I am and if you're thinking of purchasing one of these Toshiba microwaves then I've provided a link below to show you where to get one at a competitive price hope you enjoyed the video on the Toshiba MW3 AC26 combination microwave I would appreciate it if you subscribe to my YouTube channel just give us a quick thumbs up click subscribe leave any comments below I'd always ask for comments whether it's good or bad about the video 
hopefully I've tried to cover a lot of the, the detail about it, going into some of the programs and functionality that it offers. Also with a couple of demonstrations as well, obviously cooking the broccoli was okay, and that was uh, really nice, lovely and tasty, but bacon sandwich is always gonna win over some broccoli. But if you have got any questions on it, then I'm gonna be using this in my home, then just pop it in the comments and I'll get back to you. Also, if you have got one of these, if you've got a Toshiba microwave like this, then let me know what you think about it, because I'd always appreciate the feedback. Thanks for joining me today.